In this video, we're talking about the new Valve hardware that leaked and the massive Steam Deck update that's about to finally release. How's it going everyone? Welcome to Deck Ready. This is your source for all of your Steam Deck and other gaming handheld news. Uh, there's a ton of great stuff to talk about today, so I'm just gonna jump into it with this new Valve hardware. I feel like it's always South Korea that leaks this stuff because of their ratings board, but a new Valve hardware device has received certification in South Korea. There aren't a lot of details on this certificate, but basically what it breaks down to is that it's a wireless device and a lot of the stuff in this certificate pertains directly to the certificate that was granted to the Meta Quest 3 or the Oculus Quest 3. So a lot of people are thinking this could be a new standalone VR slash AR headset from Valve. So my opinion on this is that I'm actually pretty interested in it. I was an early adopter or early-ish adopter of VR. I remember Oculus sponsored a video when I was working for Austin Evans and we got an Oculus Quest into the office before it came out and I spent so much time messing around with that thing at work that when it finally released, I was there day one ready to purchase it at the store. I put a ton of time into that and then when they finally updated it to allow you to use it as an Oculus Quest headset with your gaming PC, I was completely in. I played tons of games on it at the time like Boneworks, Asgard's Wrath, I also played Star Wars Squadrons, and then when the Oculus Quest 2 came out and it had all those upgrades, it was basically a no-brainer purchase for me. One of the first like workout games I ever got into was Autica by Harmonix. That is a super underrated VR game. It's basically like a first person shooter where you're playing in VR and you shoot blocks on the beat to certain songs. There was a Discord group that was officially sanctioned by Harmonix where people would share their own songs and I played that game so much and I actually was able to lose just a little bit of weight playing it which was cool and that's kind of where I fell off with VR until the PSVR 2 came out. I played through Resident Evil Village all the way through on that thing but as much as I love that headset you know, because of the OLED screens, the great graphics, everything like that. I love that the Oculus Quest was a standalone headset when you wanted it to be. The game I spent the most time in in the wireless mode in Oculus Quest 2 was Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. That was such a good zombie game. It was so good that it like transcended the fact that it was a VR game. If you haven't played it, it's awesome. I know it got a sequel and that's uh, either on PSVR 2 or it will come to PSVR 2. The point is I've kind of fallen out of love with VR and the weirder aspect of this is it kind of seemed like Valve did too. Like the VR section on Steam got moved around. There haven't been any updates on the Index VR or anything like that. So a lot of people thought that Valve was kind of giving up on VR, but as it turns out, it looks like they were just getting ready for a new VR headset. And the timing on this makes a lot of sense just because SteamOS 3.5 is in preview. It's ready to be released. And you know, this headset, whatever it's going to be, I would imagine is running a new version of Steam VR. Now, knowing that this is is a wireless headset, I would imagine it also would be able to connect to not only your regular old Windows gaming PC, but also the Steam Deck. And the idea of playing Steam Deck games in a sort of VR, AR scenario is something that's really cool that I've actually done before. Over on my channel, PS Ready, there's a company called Vitcher. They make a pair of glasses called the Vitcher One AR glasses. And basically what they do, you've probably seen this before, is you put them on, they have a cord that connects magnetically to the arm of the glasses, and then you can connect them to your Steam Deck and it puts a simulated 120 inch screen in the world in front of you. It's something that I never thought would work, but once I started using that thing, like right out of the box, it was absolutely phenomenal. Take my endorsement of it with a grain of salt, obviously because it was a sponsored video, but there's a couple of other AR glasses out there that people love using with the Steam Deck. And I've heard that all of them work extremely well. So knowing that, knowing that people are excited about this tech, it's kind of like the perfect time for Valve to release a beefed up version of it that has AR VR capabilities. And this isn't coming out of nowhere or anything like that. We've talked about it a few times here on the channel. I think the code name right now is Deckard for this device. And the fact that we're seeing it in the South Korean ratings board basically tells us that it's probably going to be announced this year and maybe even released by the end of the year, but most likely will be released next year. Another thing that this could be though, that I really hope it is, is a new TV based console like the Steam Machine. So Steam Machines were a thing back when Steam OS was actually officially released along with the original version of big picture and basically what Valve did is they made SteamOS and then they partnered up with a bunch of different PC manufacturers like Alienware was the marquee one that they always advertised and then they also came up with the Steam controller they packaged it all together and you were theoretically going to play Linux versions of Steam games on your TV. Now the Steam machines eventually came out and I don't think I need to tell you but they uh, did not land as well as Valve wanted them to. There were a lot of valid criticisms beyond the price which I think at least was 
way higher than they really needed to be to enter the console market because even though it is a PC, they really were like trying to compete with both Windows and the PlayStation and Xbox counterparts at the time. And on top of that, there was a mixed reaction to the Steam controller. Now me personally, I have a Steam controller. I actually think it's cool. I bought it during the fire sale that happened with both that and the Steam Link. I bought them both together. I bought it with the carrying case and the optional like USB adapter and I messed around with it. The game that I found the most success with it in was actually The Witcher 3. I loved panning the camera with the right touchpad and I tried to go back when the Steam Deck came out, but the touchpads on the Steam Deck are just so much better than what we had with the Steam controller, but I'd love to see a new iteration of that controller and if Valve is working on new hardware, I would really hope that they're working on a new controller as well. Now there was a big Verge interview, uh, I think like a year or so ago where Valve talked about the Steam Deck and whether or not they do a Steam Deck 2. And they said if they do do one, it won't be a huge revision. It won't be like the Steam Deck Pro or anything like that. It'll just be like notable changes that don't mess with the hardware's performance in any way. So you could think of stuff like maybe shrinking the screen bezels, making the screen 1200p, making the screen bigger, making the console thinner, making it have a smaller footprint, you know, stuff like that. That's not going to dramatically alter the thing and kind of split it off into two different SKUs. So seeing how quickly this thing is being ramped up for a potential release, it could also be this revision on the Steam Deck. Now, I'm personally a perfect mark for this. I play my Steam Deck every day. The game I've been playing the most lately is Lies of P and it runs awesome. I know there's like a ton of different like perfect settings articles out there and I know 40 FPS is what everyone's going for. I'm playing it at I think high settings or maybe medium. I'm not entirely sure, but either way it looks really good. I'm playing it at 800p at 30 FPS with no FSR and it's a completely locked 30 FPS. It looks phenomenal and I'm having a ton of fun with this game. I also played the original Resident Evil 2, both playthroughs. I started with Leon and then went to Claire. I played through Blasphemous 2. So I've been having a great time with the Steam Deck. And next up on my list is, uh, I think I'm gonna go back and play the Dark Pictures game that was called Little Hope, the one that's kind of Blair Witch inspired just to get, you know, into the Halloween season. But my point is, if they released a new version of the Steam Deck, I played enough where that purchase is completely justified to me. So the three things that I think we should look forward to from Valve in terms of what hardware they could release are this AR VR headset Deckard that's leaked and leaked and leaked, a new uh, TV style console that's like a Steam machine but new and runs SteamOS 3.5, or a new version of the Steam Deck that has an upgraded screen and maybe some upgraded buttons, but it wouldn't be a full on redo where they're going to make it more powerful. Out of those three, I think the thing I want the most is a Steam machine that can connect to my TV. I love SteamOS 3.0. I think the new big picture mode is just perfect. I actually use it all the time because my setup that I currently have is kind of funky. It's the XG Mobile with a 4090 in it. Plugging it into a TV couldn't be easier because the power supply is inside the dock itself. So you just plug in a power cable and then plug in an HDMI. Uh, again, I'll talk about what computer I have it paired up with later, but that basically makes an awesome console interface. And I do just go into big picture mode all the time with that. I'm setting it up right after this video to play Resident Evil 4's DLC tomorrow when I'm recording this. So I would love to have this all packaged up into a Steam machine style console that I can just leave under my TV. I know Valve tried to do this with the Steam Link back in the past, but I want something like the Steam Deck that has maybe the same chip just running at a higher clock speed because you can plug it into the wall because the Steam Deck really does feel like a prototype for something like that. But out of those three options, I'd love to hear what your favorite is down in the comments below. All right, next up here, one thing that I've definitely been messing around with a ton on my Steam Deck is the new preview version of SteamOS 3.5. Now I've stayed away from the Steam Deck betas for quite a long time now, and that's because last summer I wanted to play Alan Wake on my Steam Deck and I noticed that it was stuttering quite a bit when I was playing through it and I agonized over trying to make it run right because I went on YouTube and saw that no one else was having the same stuttering issues that I did and I found out it was because my Steam Deck was in the beta OS. So I switched it back to the stable one and everything was fixed. So from that point forward, I've kind of stayed away from the beta updates, but I have been looking forward to SteamOS 3.5 for so long that when I saw it was in preview mode after such a long, extensive testing period, I felt like like it was worth installing and so far uh, I haven't had virtually any issues. In terms of display options, you're getting a bunch on both your Steam Deck screen and if you use it with a dock. So on your Steam Deck screen, they're making it so you can change not only the color temperature of the screen, but the saturation as well. It, this is awesome. I think the Steam Deck screen is fine. A lot of people love to complain about it. I'm not that kind of person who compares color temperatures to every screen I look at. I have two OLED TVs. They look awesome. I have an OLED monitor for my PC. It looks great. And to my eyes, at least the Steam Deck screen looks completely fine, but being able to change 
change. The saturation makes it look even better, so that's cool. In terms of stuff they've added for TV screens or monitors, they've added an HDR, so you can turn that on if you're using an HDR capable TV or monitor. And they've also added variable refresh rate, which is great for the Steam Deck because I know, as I said, everyone loves playing games at 40 FPS, but with a lot of AAA games, it's kind of hard to reach 40 and you'll see some dips below that. A lot of monitors and TVs only work when you're running a game above like 48 FPS, I want to say with variable refresh rate. So if you can play a game uh, with major upscaling with FSR and get it running between 50 and 60 FPS, variable refresh rate is going to come in super handy for you. Just thinking about that a little bit, I feel like emulating GameCube, PS2 games, or Wii games would be the sweet spot for something like that, or maybe even Switch games. But yeah, your mileage is definitely going to vary on a handheld device like the Steam Deck. But once again, having that feature baked into SteamOS 3.5, that just tells me that maybe Valve is working on a TV-based console. Another thing that's been massively improved with this update is performance. Now, it's not going to give you like another 10 or 15 FPS in a game like Starfield, but what it is going to do with this new graphics driver that comes along with SteamOS 3.5 is sort of smooth out the gameplay. So you'll see even less dips below 30 FPS, which with a game like Starfield is great because this game is basically optimized to run at 30 FPS. So on the Steam Deck, it's a little tricky getting it running at those frame rates. I haven't tried it out with Baldur's Gate 3, but I'd be really curious to see how that game runs on SteamOS 3.5. Uh, that game just takes up like over 100 gigabytes, so I didn't really want to reserve all the space on my Steam Deck just to install it and try out the frame rate. So if you have, let me know if it's performing better on SteamOS 3.5 in the comments below. And another big change that I will not be screwing around with is that you're now able to undervolt your Steam Deck, which is something that a lot of people have been doing, I think with third-party tools for the past few months. I'm pretty sure Cryobyte did a video on this in the past, but yeah, this is just like beyond my understanding. And I've messed around with overclocking and undervolting in the past on my regular PCs. And I always ended up running into blue screen situations. And personally, I'm really happy with the Steam Deck's performance even before I upgraded to 3.5. So yeah, that's just not something I really need to screw around with right now. But I know a lot of people have been requesting this ability. So it's nice to see that it's there. There is one disappointing aspect to SteamOS 3.5 though. And it's like minorly disappointing just how long it took to come out. I love the features that are included with it. A lot of them are big features that have been requested for a while or have been usable in Decky Loader. So it's always nice to see those get added to the official operating system just for people who don't want to mess around with Decky Loader or go into the desktop mode and work around with that kind of stuff. It's always good to see features that are being heavily used added in that way. But I really was hoping that this update would be the one where we get to install SteamOS 3.5 on other PCs. I have a partition on my computer ready to go for when this releases. And I know you can do this with other Linux branches. I think there's like Hollow OS or something like that, but I'm just the kind of person who really wants the official release to happen because the other thing that's supposed to come along with that is the ability to officially dual boot on Windows. And a lot of people who have partition set up with Windows right now are reporting that when they install SteamOS 3.5 in preview mode, it's kind of messing up their Windows side of their SSD and they're not able to boot back into Windows, which is frustrating. Now, the biggest reason I would want Windows on my Steam Deck in the first place, once again, is for games like Destiny 2 or Call of Duty. As someone who has the ROG Ally, it has really pointed out a major flaw with the Steam Deck that Valve just isn't able to get games like Destiny working on the handheld. I know it could run it. It's just so frustrating that this anti-cheat issue is still causing problems, even with games like Fortnite. My friends have been playing Fortnite lately, and that's the perfect game to kind of just grind through the battle pass on on the Steam Deck. So yeah, that's a big reason why I want to be able to dual boot Windows on my Steam Deck. And just because, again, of how long this update was taking to come out, that's what was making me kind of just cross my fingers and hope that they were going to release it big time so that you could install it on other devices. But I feel like if they are releasing a new console style Steam Deck thing that you can plug into your TV or they're releasing a new headset, getting it working on other Valve devices is the big stepping stone that we've been waiting for. So if this other hardware does come out this year, I feel like it can't be too much longer after that until we get to install it on any computer we want. But yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.